Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, Long Beach Mayor Bob Foster, as we continue our 21st anniversary year. Closed captioning provided by Scan Health Plan. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. This is the first show of the new year. We're delighted and honored to have as our guest for the entire show, the mayor of Long Beach, the Honorable Bob Foster. Bob, welcome back to Straight Talk. It's a pleasure, Art. It's been a challenging year. We're going to go over some of the accomplishments, some of the challenges. But uh, the city has come out with this 2012 year in review booklet that, in fact, highlights some of the real accomplishments this year. And one of the ones I know you're proudest of, and, and I was there for the dedication of the new concourse at the Long Beach Airport. Uh, you spoke. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it, it's been a long time coming. We've uh, tried to modernize this airport for quite some time. And, uh, you know, the airport we have is, is, is well appreciated because it's very efficient. The goal is to get you from the curb through security in 20 minutes or less. It was always like that. And the problem was it was convenient but not comfortable. You're in the hold rooms. They're crowded. In the summer, sometimes the air handling equipment couldn't really keep up. So now we now have a brand new concourse. It is a resort-like feel. It's very Long Beach. Uh, you have an open garden court with fire pits and palm trees. You have two wings where the uh, gates are. And uh, you've got great waiting areas, very comfortable, Wi-Fi throughout. And all the concessions are all Long Beach companies. And with local pricing, too. No, lo no, no, no add-on. Local pricing is exactly what they charge uh, in their regular business. And people have responded so favorably, it's, it's incredible. They love it. And I know when Mario Rodriguez, the airport director, came to town, the feud had like the Hatfields and McCoys between the larger airports, smaller, Hush 1, Hush 2. And in six months, he brought everyone together. And they came up with a fantastic solution that preserved the, the classic terminal that everyone loves, but now has these convenient uh, concourses. You know, I will tell you, the, the, the decision on reducing the size of the airport, I actually think even occurred before Mario got here. But Mario has brought a professionalism. Uh, he right-sized the parking garage. It was going to be a lot bigger than it is. And it's a he beautiful thought that was garage. Way. It's, it was done uh, three months ahead of schedule, under budget. Uh, the airport terminal is 89,000 uh, square feet. It started out in the original versions and some people for 135, 130. And you go there today and you look at it, it's very comfortable. You'd be hard pressed to know what you would do with another 40,000 square feet. And uh, according to your brochure, it's the s lowest priced airport in California, second lowest in America. That is correct. That's, uh, and, and you know, we, uh, we're a very well run operation, financially stable. And I will tell you, if any of those carriers give up a gate, there'll be a line to be able to come Some back. Some other great accomplishments during the year, uh, uh, AA rating for the city uh, paper and uh, uh, a new port headquarters uh, for the next five years. Tell us about that. That was quite controversial. Well, one of the things that I'm most proud of, uh, Art, is you know, we've, we've really weathered a, a very substantial financial storm, uh, the worst recession since the Great Depression. But what we did in Long Beach is we really stuck to principle. We said, look, we're not going to take one-time revenue and use it for ongoing expenses. We've only done that rarely and in, in specific instances. We, uh, we had proportional share. We reduced our budget in every department proportionally as we made cuts because we don't want to become a city that's just all public safety and no parks, no libraries, no public works. You can't have a city like that. So we, we really used some very strong uh, financial principles to do our budgeting. In addition to all that, we actually increased our reserves during this period, even during the period but of Getting downtime. back to the port building, you vetoed the original plan of the port to build new headquarters uh, adjacent to the current uh, outdated uh, headquarters. 
I vetoed the port, uh, the port headquarters because it was way too expensive. And quite frankly, I think uh, it's better served to use port land for productive purposes. The port should be downtown. And, and symbolically uh, making it more part of the city, which yeah, I know has that been is correct. your marching thought for years. Yeah, look, I don't, nobody wants it to be like Los Angeles where the, the port commissioners serve at the pleasure of the mayor. We don't want that. Uh, on the other hand, I don't want such a disconnect that they're not part of the city. They are, they are a city department. They started out with public money. You don't secretly want that? No, I do not. Okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't support an effort to do okay. that. Okay. I think I, for a business enterprise, I think it's important to have an arm's length relationship from politics. And I've noticed that it seems that some of the best run entities in this city <clears throat> are under separate commissions, whether it's the port, the airport, Long Beach Transit, uh, the water department. They seem to run pretty well where they're insulated from political control. Well, I, I would, you know, I don't, because I, I, I would have argued that oil and gas, which doesn't have its own board, also is well run. Okay. And I would argue that public works is fairly well run. It, look, it's a different principle. If you're handling, if you have a big business enterprise uh, and you want to run by business principles, I think you should be not disconnected from politics, but at arm's length. And I think we've found a good balance in Long Beach. Having said that, uh, I don't think you should be ignore the fact that you're a city department. That you're part of the city, yeah. So anyway, the port then went ahead and was going to buy the World Trade Center, but uh, that was not approved by a majority of the board. Uh, your two appointees opposed it, and just recently it was announced that they bought uh, a building for a little under $25 million in the airport area, which is a little bit of a commute, but not exceptional, while they wait for a new headquarters, which in my judgment, the natural location would be when the old courthouse gets raised, when the Duke Majin courthouse opens, that would be a great location for the port headquarters and maybe a new city hall as well because city hall is getting old. Actually, look, the issue here is not old or, or even functional. The issue is safety, both in the port building and city hall. Much more acute in the port building. The building is unsafe. In a substantial earthquake, it's likely to pancake. Yes. Yeah. So the employees had to get out of there. Now, look, I... Uh, I will tell you, uh, I, I felt very strongly that it made no sense to buy the World Trade Center. It was overpriced. It, it was not a good purchase. Uh, and then when it got down to leasing, you look at the price of leasing the World Trade Center versus buying this building, which is a very good building, easy to secure, use it as a temporary location for four or five years. And you might be able to sell it for more than you paid for I, I think you very, I think you very likely yeah. would. Now, they've done that. I give them a lot of credit. Look, it's a minor inconvenience. You've got a slightly more uh, longer commute. Yeah. You know, you're a little bit away from your asset. But ultimately, what I'd like, and I think they're now embarked on, is a procedure to build an iconic building downtown. Yeah. I'm not sure where it'll be, but they are putting together a process that I think will be defensible. Great. Well, we're going to continue this great conversation with the mayor after we pause for these messages. Supported by Edison International. Californians are getting to be old hands at year-round energy conservation, part of our special awareness of the resources we all depend on. We're making the change to energy-efficient light bulbs, keeping warm weather thermostats set to a comfortable 78 degrees, and giving major appliances the afternoon off. Because when it comes to energy conservation, it all adds up. Life powered by Edison. In today's world, everything's connected. From the workplaces that support us, to the homes that welcome us, to the trees and wildlife habitats that remind us how important our environment is. When a bird lands on a branch, and in the midst of a busy day, we stop to watch. It makes us realize we're all in the same boat. The Port of Long Beach welcomes this world with open arms, an environmental policy that's second to none, and a commitment to shaping a vibrant community. The Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. Hello, I'm Jessica Hardy, a proud Long Beach native and a member of the USA Swimming national team. Having spent much of my life in water, I've developed a deep appreciation for the valuable role that this precious resource plays in our lives. In recent years, California's water supply has become unreliable. To address this reality, Long Beach residents have dramatically reduced their water use through permanent lifestyle changes. In doing so, Long Beach has made itself a leader in water conservation. 
As I work hard to achieve my personal goal of qualifying for the 2012 Summer Olympics, I encourage you to continue your tremendous efforts to use water in smart and responsible ways. So join me and your fellow Long Beach residents in strengthening the water conservation movement. By making small but significant changes in our water use habits, together we can ensure that we have a reliable water supply for many generations to come.